How is it with thy arrow handling, pray? Thou art a dear, good-hearted man, and yet, I think, dost not incline that way. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and <laughs> that was re me reciting our famous German poet Goethe and I slightly adapted the poem to uh, today's topic, um, maybe you spotted it, it's error handling. And I will only talk about the very basics of error handling. So if you are an advanced access developer or an expert, I will not hold it against you if you just skip this video because this is made for beginners. So if you are a beginner in VBA or if you are not really sure about how error handling uh, works, then this video is for you. So error handling is an important topic. First, because it is an important topic and I will get to that in a minute. And secondly, because it is um, often omitted from code samples on the internet. You can look um, at 10 different code samples and you will learn a lot uh, about implementing features, but most or even all of them will completely lack error handling. And there is a good reason for that. Actually, two good reasons. Um, the first one is, and I do that myself, when I show a code sample and publish that somewhere, then I either omit error handling um, from the start or I remove it later to kind of condense that sample to its bare essentials so that there's no distracting code that does not serve showing the functionality I want to show in that sample. And uh, for, for the topic of the code sample, that is good. But if you are a beginner and never have seen error handling, then it is bad because you think, oh, all these clever people are posting code samples on the internet. None of those has error handling. If you even think about error handling, none of those has error handling. So it can't be that important. I will omit that as well. And that would be a, the wrong conclusion. So uh, that being said, let's look at some code. So I prepared a very simple form here. It just has one button and it just uh, went away for whatever reason. I don't know what's wrong here. Um, so where is my form? So I prepared a simple form here. Um, it just has one button we can click and I will push that to the side and click the button and you will already see the code here. It is um, running some procedure, do some work, which actually does no work at the moment. That is not relevant for the sample. And then it displays a message box, some work was done. This is as far as it goes from functionality today. But we want to look at error handling. And to talk about or to, to write code about error handling, we need an error. And the most basic way to create or to force an error into existence is to divide something by zero. And that will just cause an arithmetic error. Division by zero is not possible. So that is an error. And you see already what happens when there is an error but no error handling. And this is exactly what your users will see. They will see a message box and they will see your code if you deploy the ACCDB file without, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So your users will see this error message and yeah, they have the option to, to end or to debug. I click debug and then we will see the exact line of code that caused the error being highlighted because code execution stopped there. That is a really nice feature for developers. But your users, what should they do with that? Um, 
it is a really, really bad user experience if your users suddenly uh, jump into VBA code. That, that should not happen, absolutely not. And if they um, type in here, they can change the code if they save that. So that is something we want to absolutely avoid. And it gets even worse because if you don't deploy the ACCDB file, but compile to an ACCDE and uh, deploy that to a runtime environment, to the access runtime, then your users will not see the code because it isn't there and the runtime is not uh, meant to, to show code, so it will not show, but the execution of your program will stop. Your, your program will basically crash and is gone. The access window will still be there, but your application just ends. It, it stops working. So that is even worse or equally worse. I, I, I don't want to uh, compare that on a worseness scale, but it's worse. So we need to do something about that. And that something is error handling. So let's stop the code for a second and to Add error handling to a procedure. We need the on error directive. That will tell the VB compiler and the, the runtime environment, okay, if an error happens while this directive is active, then do something. And the easiest solution is to use on error resume next. And, well, let's run this. Oh, everything works perfectly. There was no error message and we see our message box here, some work was done, everything's fine. No, not really. The on error resume next statement instructs the runtime when it's running the code to just execute the next line of code if an error happened. So, in this case, everything appears normal. But you don't really know what's happened. The error is just swiped under the carpet. It will not uh, show any symptoms. There will be no error message, but the error is still there. And parts of your program did not execute. So this is a huge problem because we write our programs that certain actions are executed. And if you just add an on error resume next, they won't. And if you don't care if uh, your program executes the way you intended it to, or, or if you don't care, then why write the program in the first place? So we need something else. And um, there is only a very narrow, uh, um, very few scenarios where you should use on error resume next. And I recorded a video about that. I'll put the link up here. And for today, we are not going to talk anymore about on error resume next. Just keep in mind, do not use it unless you really know what you're doing. So. We delete that. The other option with on error is to add an go to statement combined with an error label. Oh, and I, I can, um, that, that does not need to be a error label. I could also call that banana or sausage or whatever you like. It's just a name for a label. I still go with error label, so if, um, if we see that, then it's much more clear what it is. But if I just write that and compile my code, I get an error from the compiler, the label is not defined. So let's define the label, and that is actually quite easily, easy. We just put in the label name followed by a colon, and this is our jump label. And now if an error happens, the runtime will know, okay, 
if an error happens, I should go to the code segment marked with the label error label or marked with the label banana or whatever you choose. That does not matter. You just need to um, find a name and type it there. So that is up to you how you name it. And now if an error happens, the code after that error label here will execute. And for our purposes, it's perfectly fine to just add a message box, an error happened, and to include some more information, I will use the error object. So it's error dot number and error dot description. The error object is a built-in object that is already instantiated. You can directly access it. Under normal circumstances, it will kind of be uh, um, uninitialized. You can still use the object, but if you type error dot number, it will be zero. And error dot description will be an empty text. But if an error happens in your program, this error object will contain information about the error. And the most relevant and most important is the error number and even more important, the error description. So let's run this code again. And here we are. We see a new message box and this is our message box inside the error handling uh, bit of the code below the error label and it includes the error number 11 and the description is division by zero. So now we substituted that built-in message um, through one message of our own and if we just make this big and you see we now do not jump into the VBA environment and the code, but in our access environment, the error message is displayed. So we already achieved our primary goal to provide a better error experience for the user. Now he's not confused about seeing your code. He cannot hit debug and change the code. And if this application would run inside the runtime environment, we would also see this error message. And if we hit OK, then the application would still be in the state it was before, at least in a defined state. We know the user knows there was an error and the application is still there. And, and the, the user can call you and say, yeah, I click on that button and then an error message uh, appears, but beyond the error in that area of the program, it is still able to function normally. So it will not terminate as it would have without the error handler. But this is not complete yet. So if we fix the error by <laughs> just <laughs> commenting the line that causes the error and run it again, you will see something unexpected. First, the expected some work was done message box is shown. But I click OK and then we see an error happened zero. And that is because now the code for our error handling is executed when there was no error. So the error dot number is zero and there's no error description because there was no error. So there's one important bit we need to add here and that is an exit substatement. So that will tell um, the execution, okay, just leave this procedure, we are finished here and everything's done. So it will not continue to execute the code that is um, that comes after the exit sub so our error handler will never be executed unless 
there actually is an error. I just run it um, when there's no error. So everything works as expected. I click OK and now no error message is there. I reintroduce our bug here, run the code again, and now you see execution jumped to our error handler and displays the error message box. Great. So we handled the error in our top level procedure, in the event procedure of the button. But what if this error is in... Oh, my computer is struggling with the video recording while doing coding here. So I move the error to this do some work procedure. And now we run the code again. And you see there is no error in our main procedure because I commented that out, but the error happened in the procedure we called in the do some work procedure. And still our error handler in the calling procedure and our button click handler, it still catches this error because it was uh, the error was caused in um, a subordinate procedure. And so our error already, our error handler already handles this. And you will sometimes see that people go ahead and add an error handler as we did to each and every procedure. I actually did that when I started uh, with programming, but I don't do that anymore and I will explain why. So I add um, some more text here, error happened in do some work just for um, for that we are able to distinguish where that error happened. Now we run that again and you see an error happened in do some work. And now we continue and now we see our some work was done message box because the calling procedure that um, is the event handler was calling the procedure with the error does not know anything about the error happening because it was already handled at a lower level and that is It's not ideal in, in this way because the user sees, okay, there's an error and then he, he sees the information work was done, but actually there was no work done because the sub procedure failed. And for that reason, I would recommend for most cases do not add error handlers on each and every level of your code, but add error handlers on the top level procedures, on the event handling procedures where the execution is execution of your code is triggered from the outside because the user clicked a button, a form was updated, a control value was changed or whatever. The user did something that triggered the code and in the procedure that handles the event, there should be an error handler. In all lower level procedures that are called by your code, there should not be this type of error handler, this simple type that just displays a message and tells the user that there was an error because it does not really help the user. He would have seen the error message even with a top level um, error handler as we have seen. And our code does not know that there was an error in, in a subordinate procedure. So I would rather just remove the error handling bit in this procedure and just leave it on the top level. Well. Well, actually, that was what I wanted to show today in code. Let's talk about 
this topic a little bit more, but um, I will not show an example today because it's out of scope. I will just give some hints. Um, of course, there are valid reasons where you would put error handlers in inside subordinate procedures that do something specific, that actually do the work. But these need to be um, fine-tuned and adapted to the purpose of that procedure. For example, if you try to write a file and you know, okay, this file was just exported from an external application or maybe it was just exported from your access application and maybe that file is still open when that code runs. But if we retry that after a second, we can be 99% sure it works. So you could put in a dedicated error handler in that particular file writing procedure that kind of um, swallows the first time that the error happened, like file is locked or whatever, and then just retries it to, to do the same operation afterwards. That would be a valid um, error handler in a sub procedure, or maybe it can analyze different types of errors and, and can decide, oh, this error is actually not very serious. We kind of expect that and we the code knows how to fix the error or how to still successfully run if the error happens. These are scenarios for dedicated error handlers in the working procedures that actually do stuff. Um, or if you want to add error logging and include additional information about the procedure that caused the error. All these um, were, are valid reasons to add an error handler in like functions and procedures that are called from top level event handlers. Just adding a message box saying there was an error this is not a good reason to put a dedicated error handler into a procedure. So, oh, one more word about the go to statement. Do not use it, please. The go to statement is just for the error handler. It's okay to use it in an error handler because VBA has no other means of error handling. But please never use go to and these jump labels in any other context except error handling because this creates horrible code where it's incredibly hard to follow the the execution of the code when you read the code to kind of understand what the code does because it jumps. There's a reason these labels are called jump label. The code jumps here and it jumps back and this is really hard to read and it is very likely that you will introduce errors in your program by using these jump labels. So only use them for the purpose of error handling. Okay, I think we got it for today. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.